In this lesson, we're gonna get a little bit more nerdy with it. We're gonna get into some of the codes and show some things you can do. If you're willing to kind of get your hands dirty with ChatGPT, Signal Stack, and Trading View, we're gonna go into this one because there's some a little bit more advanced functionality. So the Trend Spider functionality was great, and the best part of it is it's very low barrier for entry. You can just get right into it and you can get started because it's a nice GUI interface. For those who wanna get really advanced and get into it, you can program some custom indicators in Trading View and have those launch right on Trade the Pool. So without further ado, we're gonna start here with ChatGPT because I don't know how to code, but I can prompt ChatGPT and it knows how to code. So that is what we will end up doing first. So right off the bat, I just kind of said, hey, um, we're gonna build some indicators. We're gonna build a 15 minute opening range break strategy um, that uses a stop, uh, uses the opening range for a stop and then puts a user controlled target of some multiple of that. What I meant by that was if the stop is you're entering here and the stops the high of the day, if the user puts in two, then they're gonna try to get two times the risk uh, out of the trade if they put in three, three times the risk, so on and so forth. And then it just spits it out. That's the beauty of it. So it spits out right here. We have uh, under version six, which is the current Pine script code, everything that you would need with notes, showing what these notes are, uh, long, short, what we're looking for, right? Close over the high, so on and so forth. And you can read through all the code and then it just gives you the code. So I will make this available to you guys as well. And the beauty of it is I went and I initially put in the code. And for those who don't know, you go to trading view and under pine editor right here, you can click, I want a new, so create new and then indicator. You can do that right there. And from here, you just copy in your code and paste it. And when I did, it gave an error and I just copy and paste the error directly. I said, uh, you know, the syntax error, this isn't working. We got to put it, you know, do another one here. And it will say, yep, thanks for clearing it up. Here is the new code. And then we can just copy this and we can go over to here and we can just paste it in and hit add to chart. And there we go. So now we have our indicator added to the chart. You can see if we look at the spy right here, if we look at the spy today, actually let's just remove everything else so we can really focus in on what we're doing. And we'll remove this one as well. So this is the opening range break. So the first 15 minutes in the opening range, you can see it said and it would enter an OR short and I put 50 bucks risk per trade because the beauty of what we're doing here is it will size itself accordingly. So, you know, if you're putting in, depending on the size of your trade, the pool account, if you have a bigger account, you might want to risk more on every trade. If you have a smaller account, you might want to risk less on any given trade and then the target multiple. So it's looking for a two times your target based off of this hundred dollar risk. Uh, you can say short enable short trades or maybe just long trades if you just want to buy or you just want to sell. So what has this done for us now that we can do this? Well, if you go up to the indicators here on trading view and then you just right click here on this configuration button and just make sure everything is right. And then over here on the three dots and hit set alert, you've got a couple things that you can do. So first of all, you can set an alert for this particular strategy and under notifications, enable webhook, and you can see right here is my trade the pool signal stack webhook. Now, because all of the code that is required is packeted into the indicator, which you can see right in here, um, right, the long JSON, it's saying it's gonna grab the ticker by uh, quantity fix, it's gonna calculate the quantity based off of the entry price and the stop loss price. It's gonna send the stop price and it's gonna send the target price and the take profit price out through the indicator right into right here. So if I now click okay on the SPY, it's just going to take that trade. every When the opening range gets broken, every time the opening range gets broken, it's gonna take the trade. Again, this code is available to you guys. You can do that on the SPY and you can also do it on a symbol list. So right now, whatever symbol list you have open here, right now I have just my generic symbol list open, I can say instead of doing on the SPY, I want to do it on this symbol list. So I can then populate this symbol list however I would like 
base off whatever symbols I would like, and it will take opening range break trades on those symbols. So let's say my process now changes. We talked about all of this throughout the course about the benefit of systematic trading. Instead of having a thousand different monitors with all of the stocks that are in play or in the news and waiting for the opening range break to hit and then calculating the math on what, how much I want to trade and what the size is and all of that, and then trying to punch them all in super quick as the trade happens, I can sit down in the morning grab a coffee, read through all my news, say, yeah, if uh, the SPY breaks its opening range or say, for example, here's a good example from today, uh, Microsoft, right? Say I only want it to fade the Microsoft gap lower. I only want it to short Microsoft. I did not want to buy Microsoft. Well, I could just bring it up. I could set my alert. Um, well, sorry, first I'd have to go in and I would disable long trades and I would only enable short trades. And I want to risk, uh, you know, say $50, and I wanted a 1.5 to one risk reward ratio. Now, all I have to do is go in and click and make sure my, my signal stack webhook is assigned, and then just hit create. And now when Microsoft triggers an opening range to the short side, right in this area right here, it would have shorted. I didn't have to be watching at that moment. I didn't have to calculate all that. I didn't have to do all of those things. I just simply take the trade, hit the button, and it will do the rest for me. I just, every time I'm doing this to each individual symbol, it's like I'm promising that I will take the trade uh, when and if this thing happens. And if at any point, I'm looking through, I'm going through my list and I'm saying maybe this opening range is a little bit too wide on Microsoft. And I don't want to take the trade anymore. I'll just go into my alert section and I will just delete the alert. So now you can see how, what we have done by doing this, if we really think about it, the process of a discretionary trader, let's go through quickly, is to add alerts and to set up tons of charts across 16 different monitors and try to watch everything while not exploding their brain for all of the different trades for all of the in-play stocks they might want to trade this day. When something occurs, they have to be mentally able to take the trade, calculate the position size, um, you know, do all of that in real time to make sure that they're not missing anything, and then punch into the trade. The systematic trader simply says, I have tested maybe fading opening range breaks on very strong stocks. Maybe that's a strategy that you've tested over time. You say, hey, if the stock gaps up and it breaks its 15 minute opening range to the downside. I think in the long run, that is something that will make me money. Well, now all you have to do is come in before the market opens, find the gap ups that you want to fade based off the trader, put, click on the alerts, right? Create an alert for each one that will send the trade automatically to trade the pool for you and then wait. When the opening ranges are filled, you will see them enter your trade the pool account. You can manage them there. Say the you want to, you know, exit early. You can just exit them. Say you want to move the profit target or you want to move a stop loss or you want to keep an eye on just the trades you're in and maybe exit them based off of a moving average or something to that respect. You can do that. For example, today, I had a whole bunch of longs and shorts. And when the market sold off pretty dramatically here, I covered the shorts and stayed in the longs. And then as the market bounced, I sold some of the longs. So I, they weren't purely systematic trades because I stepped in after the trades were taken and have taken some off the table here, there traded around those positions. However, I'm not watching a million monitors because I know exactly what will happen on any of the trades that I'm interested in. So again, this is getting really deep into the weeds and you can see we've only talked about one particular strategy for this entire course, a simple opening range break strategy. Well, now that we have gone through the process and we have fully automated our opening range break strategy where all we have to do is populate the list every morning for what it is that we wanna look at. Uh, it could be the same stocks every day, it could be you know different stocks depending on what's happening in the news. We can now offload most of the trading of this very simple strategy to the robots. What should we do in the meantime? Should we go out, you know, to the pub, 
halfway through the day and, and do that. It's like, absolutely not. What we should do is we should look for the next strategy. So you take your opening range breakout strategy, which is in, uh, by definition, a trend continuation style strategy. You take that particular strategy, you trade it. Hopefully you pass an eval account or two and you start to make money and get payouts from those. Then you build additional strategies. Maybe you pair this momentum trend continuation strategy with a MACD crossover strategy, which would be a little bit more of, say, a, a revision to the mean or, or a, you know, a, a counter trend strategy. You're looking for stocks that have moved up and now the MACD is curling over. Same process. And then you pair that with, uh, you know, say a gap fill strategy, you're looking for a stock to gap up and then fill the gap and then you buy it there, same process. And you can see that with systematic trading, once your process is developed and worked upon, the ability to add more strategies to add more trading styles to that becomes a lot easier. So this is again, really getting into the weeds. The last thing I'll say before I let you guys go on this one is that, again, make sure you're recording these. Right. Make sure you're taking these and you're going to other partners that we have over at Trade the Pool that are journaling softwares. And every night you're just exporting the trades that you took and you're putting them in, you're tagging them based off that strategy. That'll become very important when you're running multiple strategies to know which strategies are working for you, which might not be so much. Uh, you know, when what strategies you should maybe increase risk on, which ones you should decrease risk on, things like that. But yeah, we've gotten really into the weeds here. And again, stay tuned. There'll be tons of education when it comes to live streams and webinars, more videos, the whole nine yards. I'm very excited for this, as you guys can tell, and I'll talk to you soon.